Hi all, hope you're keeping well and welcome to this midweek message as we continue to go deeper into the healing uh, series that we're going to be uh, going on for the next uh, several or even longer weeks. But before we open up today, let's just open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we come before you and we just adore you. Lord, we, we bow our knees and we confess that you are Lord and Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you, Jesus Christ, are Lord. So as we go into this message, Lord, we ask that you open the hearts, the minds, and the spirits of those following on from the message on Sunday, one heart, one mind, one spirit. And as we do so, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so Sunday's message was all about uh, prophecy, both being fulfilled and unfulfilled, as well as the kingdom being now and not yet. But also being one mind and one heart and just appreciating the love of the Father in all that happens during the season of growth, healing, restoration and revival. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to open our, our spiritual eyes and ears. And we're just going to recap on what we touched on on Sunday with regards to Paul's conversion or Saul's conversion being the, the uh, Pauline conversion accounts in Acts. Now, in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 19, which we, I'll let you read through this in your own time, but it just uh, made some notes that we can go through and get just appreciate his conversion and uh, how the Lord worked mightily through him. First of all, the, he was breathing threats against the Lord's disciples and those that were the believers in the Lord and yeah, brought both men and women bound to Jerusalem and the light that shone around him was one that was so magnificent that he actually couldn't see. And it was, uh, it was the Lord asking, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus, who you, who you persecuting? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So then he arose and went into the city so that uh, there could be another fulfillment. What was that other fulfillment? There was a certain name by the name of... Uh, Ananias, and he was the disciple in Damascus. And Ananias was listening to the Lord, and he said, Here I am, Lord, approaching the Lord with humility. And then the Lord explained that Saul would see a vision coming to put a hand on him, and this was something that was followed through so that he may be able to receive sight. That's the beautiful workings of the Lord. And the Lord said, He is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, as well as the children of Israel. And after receiving his sight, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, it was almost like his sight returned with the uh, scales falling from his eyes. So he received his sight at once and was baptized. And it was a great, wonderful time that he was strengthened through food and sharing with the disciples uh, before he then journeyed on. The second Pauline conversion was taken from Acts chapter 22, verses 6 to 21. That was addressing the Jerusalem mob, which we touched on on Sunday. And uh, when Paul spoke about this, he was talking to uh, the Israelites. And he asked the question, may I speak to you? And the reply was, can you speak in Greek? So there were some accusations from the Egyptians who stirred up a rebellion and led 40,000 or 4,000 assassins into the wilderness during this time. But with this humble uh, request, he was asking for, mission, for permission to speak to the people and ended up speaking to, to them in the Hebrew language. And he spoke to them as brethren and fathers, speaking of his defense, about his conversion. Acknowledging that he himself was a Jew brought up in the strictness of the laws and the fathers that uh, were zealous towards God and uh, as he was with them that day, he was just appreciating and respecting that uh, at one time he persecuted them, but uh, he also appreciated that through the Lord's uh, anointing, uh, deliverance on his life, he was able to appreciate that um, Damascus experience and, and how Ananias showed him uh, how Paul's conversion and subsequent ministry were all all compatible with the Jewish testimony. And appreciating that he was one of them, he was speaking to them in Hebrew, he was speaking to them in the language that they could understand. But also he appreciated that they wouldn't hear his testimony through the Jewish uh, leadership and the community in Jerusalem, not being the church, but just the community and the leadership. But Paul noted something in verses 22 as to how 
the utter madness of the opposition to Paul and the Christian message he presented, highlighting the fact that believers were shown to be rational and those that were just, uh, detractors were the ones being irrational. But the message of Jesus and the cross is foolishness, uh, foolishness to the world, but to those who are saved, utterly reasonable. This gospel that I'm sharing with you is the wisdom and the power of God, which we appreciate. So with the first uh, Pauline conversion experience, there was his own sin. His own sin led to that personal repentance, and that personal repentance gave the opportunity for individual forgiveness, as well as the eternal restoration. What about the second Pauline conversion? He faced many accusations once he had been saved and delivered and given of the Holy Spirit. But he, was hum uh, he, he came to the people in humility as well as connection. He shared his testimony on how these things happened, speaking the truth. What about the third Pauline conversion in Acts chapter 26 verses 12 to 18? How Paul recounted his conversion. As he journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, that was an, a shared an experience that he was able to uh, rise and stand on his feet and appeared for this purpose to share the good news. But as a minister and a witness to both the things which had been seen and not yet seen, the now and not yet, he was uh, taken from that place of uh, uh, the Jewish brethren as well as from the Gentiles, and then he was then sent to be able to go and share the good news. Why was he going to share the good news? He was going to share the good news because he was going to open their eyes, because some people are still in that process of coming to the Lord. Whether they're still persecuting the disciples or the church, or whether they have had that experience that has opened their eyes and appreciate, appreciated his body, his Christ, his church, to turn them from the darkness into the marvelous light of our Lord Jesus Christ and from the power of Satan through to the eternal victorious glory of God. The forgiveness of sin was not only available for Saul, but also available for those who heard the, the good news, the message, the gospel, also being sanctified by, uh, sanctified by faith. So as we appreciate these, uh, this third Pauline experience let's recap on what happened in this third one there was a reflection there was a reflection on his his uh, his baptism his uh, saving grace there was a commissioning and ascending that allowed him to be able to go and share the good news as well as a, a preaching opportunity to repent and for others to come into the kingdom so with that short message i just want to uh, open up this healing time asking us to remember that in all things because once we were sinners and then we were saved and as we continue to grow deeper we want to bring others into him because every good and perfect gift is from above and we are all his children so as we appreciate there can be some wounds that still need to be healed some illnesses that still need to be uh, brought into alignment and perhaps maybe some losses or grief that can be restored we continue to do this because we, we're looking at this uh, healing process of the heart. And as I've uh, shared before, it comes from the, the renewal of the mind and allows us to let go of the old and get a hold of the new. Behold, I do a new thing. Now we look at uh, Job, uh, Job chapter 38 verses 36. And in this account, it was a, quite a lengthy passage of discourse which allowed people to see the, 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 the journey that Job went through. And it was a journey that was very difficult because he lost everything. But he was still faithful to his, his God and, and very trusting in him during difficult times that allowed him to walk in Christ, that allowed him to be able to come out at the end being blessed with more than he went into the situation with. But during this process, the Lord revealed his omnipotence to Job. And, and we're going to pick it up in, in a few minutes with regards to the verse that I'm focusing on today. But without correcting the justice or injustice of uh, Job's circumstances, God answered him by comparing his omnipotence to Job's impotence, which is uh, infinite versus finite. And that's something we can all appreciate, that while the Lord is working in and through us, he's doing a good work. And when we see him breaking through 
our lives, other people's lives, we just give thanks, not for our for our efforts, but we do stand in alignment in prayer and intercession. And also just equipping ourselves and each other so that we can continue fighting the good fight. He described this by describing the greatness of the earth in uh, 38 verses 1 to 18. The complexities of heaven, which is varied in chapter 38 verses 19 to 38. As well as his awesome design of the creatures of the earth uh, found in chapter 38 verses 39, 3 to 39 verses 30. But the verse that I want to just focus on here, who has put wisdom in the mind or who has given understanding to the heart? And what the Lord was saying there was that he was saying, I'm the one who is all wise and all understanding. And when you trust in me and put your faith in me, I will be able to work in and through you like he's done with every single creature, every single living human being regardless of the circumstances and the tragedies that happen in life back then and still today. So I just want to encourage you with this passage of scripture, because sometimes we may feel, as Job did in uh, chapter 9, verses 4, that there was no mediator in his situation, but he still trusted. He still trusted. God is a wise in heart, as well as mighty in strength, and who has hardened himself against him and prospered so that was a message again from the lord just coming into his wisdom coming coming into his understanding and not hardening our hearts during times of loss grief betrayal hurt anger bitterness remember it's those clean hands and pure hearts we continue to work towards that striving towards none of us are perfect we all fall short to the glory of god but it's God who works out all things for the good for those that love him and are called according to his purposes. For if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, David was also a man who was uh, a man after God's own heart. And he, he made errors. And every time he realized the errors that he had made, he came back and repented and asked for forgiveness. And this is something that we can ask the Lord to search our hearts and minds and spirits during the season as part of this healing process to allow him to do the good and work through. But as with the Pauline conversion, there was a time where we came into repentance. If we look at uh, Psalms 51 verses 6, and I'd encourage you to read the whole psalm. It's only 19 verses. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts you will make me known you will make me to know wisdom. Let me repeat that. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Now, David identified that even from birth, the, the, the opportunity to sin was there, even for all humankind. And while he appreciated his own sin, just like Ezekiel did, he acknowledged that, that there were sins of others and also nations. And he acknowledged that we all, like I said, fall short to the glory of God. But, you know, God's spirit prompted David to live and strive towards truth. And in that account, it was speaking of hyssop. Now, hyssop is like a herb that um, allowed cleansing and purity and purification, cleansing of the soul to come into, into that, that, uh, that healing process that's available for us all. You know, verses 16 and 17, which... Uh, it says, for you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. This is highlighting the, the ritual or sacrificial services of uh, external uh, religiosity. They couldn't uh, be fulfilled without the attitude of the inward spirit being renewed, falling short of full repentance. Because if we don't work from the inside out and mend the heart, allow him to mend the heart, then we may still fall short because we're trying to do things from an external point of view as opposed to allowing him to do something from inside. Giving us the opportunity to have that heart renewed, strengthened, vitalized that will give us that hope in the future that he promised even to jeremiah 
Now, with this said, we live in a world that is so uh, demanding on all things, and we just appreciate that he's working all things out for the good. But, you know, sometimes we appreciate that uh, in life, you know, there's a time to plant, there's a time to sow, there's a time to be joyous, there's a, there's a time to, to, to reap, uh, and there's a time to weep. Ecclesiastes is a wonderful book to go and appreciate how Solomon looked at all these things. And um, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 26, it was speaking of the end of the wise and the fool. This is now highlighting perhaps maybe the uh, failure of materialism. But we appreciate that while we're here, to, we are wanting to do good and bring people into his kingdom while making a difference out there in his time, in his will and in his divine grace. But appreciating through these scriptures, acknowledging that wealth and pleasure accomplish little, the preacher cannot take them with him once he has gone. So as we continue to labor, it's almost like we're toiling, not knowing who's going to look after the stuff that we're toiling over. Because even the preacher, in this sense, Solomon was speaking about how he would be concerned. Would he leave his inheritance to the wise or the fool, leaving his wealth and the yields that he's been able to bring, offering the preacher little comfort in this? Perhaps maybe even in despair, he was considering leaving his labor to those who hadn't worked for it or deserved, deserved it. But if he cannot take it with him and he's uncertain as to how his hearers would treat it or steward it, we should just enjoy what we have while, we, while we're here. And as I mentioned on Sunday, we're going to be going into a message this coming Sunday about stewardship. And the enjoyment of one that, that one has is a blessing from God, whether great or small. And the important uh, thing is to keep things in the right priorities, keeping our eyes fixed on him so that he can do a good thing because he wants us to be um, whole. He wants us to be uh, blessed. And he also wants us to have that eternal, redemptive, restorative plan. So with this short message and just uh, touching back on Saul's conversion, highlighting three of these Pauline conversions, we're just going to highlight them again. In the first one, it was that personal repentance. The next one was that indiv individual forgiveness from the Lord for what we're repenting of, as well as the eternal restoration. It's getting our vertical relationship intact and restored. The second Pauline conversion included the accusations but the humility and connection as well as the testimony and the truth. And the third Pauline conversion was the reflection, the commissioning and the sending, as well as the preaching of repentance, as well as the promise that uh, is available for us all. So as we close off this short message, midweek message of healing, I just ask that the Lord will be able to comfort all during the season, whether we are uh, contending for a healing, contending for a forgiveness, contending for a a renewed heart, heart of flesh. I pray the Lord will open his love to you, shine his face upon you during this healing process that will help us appreciate that we do have a, a mediator in Christ Jesus. Through the repentance that we are, have the opportunity and the uh, great privilege to come into his presence and then go through those steps of the baptism that Paul or Saul had as well as many others back then and today. But what do we need to do? My encouragement for you is to seek you first the kingdom of God, so all his righteousness shall be added unto you. Keeping our eyes fixed on him, keeping our hearts pure to him. And enjoy the blessings of God that we have today, whether it's relationships, whether it's whatever we have, material. Remember the message that I shared on Sunday about how it's all good that people judge social uh, prosperity via the house that we live in or the cars that we drive or the bling that we have. But it's also the eternal, wonderful message that was shared by our father of the faith. It's that eternal um, stewardship of great wealth in relationships, in our spiritual vitality, as well as our mending hearts. Let's keep God the focus. Keep him the primary through his son, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time today, Lord. We ask that you speak to the hearts and minds of those that are hearing this message, Lord. And 
As it said in your word, behold, I do a new thing. Lord, we know that your, your children are all precious in your sight. And all good things come from above. So, Heavenly Father, as we continue going into the following messages, as well as our Sunday messages about stewardship, we ask that you help us and guide us, lead us and protect us into all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, sending you all the love in the world, and we'll catch up on Sunday. Lots of love. Take care, and remember, He's got you.